Welcome, fans, to a playoff edition of Rangers Ed Podcast. Going to be a little bit of a sad one today or this morning, but we're going to try and keep it as light as possible. We got some special guests lined up for you guys. Uh, we got our buddy Oscar over from Oscar's Pro Stitch coming on in a few minutes to join us. We also got Mikey 150 to talk a little bit about the Bruins' uh, epic collapse earlier this year or this uh, playoff series. And uh, then we're obviously just going to get into the Rangers and talk about what went on, what could have went differently, uh, talk about the hot topics surrounding the team. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we were thinking about taking the week off, but figured it'd be better off to get our thoughts out there for you guys. I know a lot of you guys tuned in to my first ever therapy session after the game the other night. So that was pretty cool. Thank you all to for coming out to do that. It was a lot of fun hanging out with you guys, even though it was – a somber time for all of us. Um, so, yeah, I mean, let me introduce my guests, or not my guests, my co-host, sorry. Um, cousin Ed's not here today, so I'm going to be taking over for him. He's visiting his mom tomorrow, so we have to take a late flight. Um, but I'm always joined by Coach Ed over here, bundled up in his throwback Rangers sweatshirt. Feeling a little bit under the weather, but he's going to have his flu episode tonight, I think. How you feeling, Coach? We're good. Coach? We're good. I'm on my way back. Nice. Good. Good. And we got Mikey Produces down there, of course. Going to keep us organized here with a few of our guests popping in and out. How we doing, Mikey? Fantastic. Well, I guess it could be better, but it gets a little bit better day by day. Yeah, yeah. I mean, seeing all the uh, media and everything surrounding, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just tough. So uh, let's just get right into it. We're going to bring on our first guest. Oscar from Oscar's Pro Stitch. Uh, we're not going to run. There he is. We're not going to run his uh, usual ad read by Coach Ed, everyone's favorite. Um, so we're just going to talk to Oscar, let him get some things off his chest. Uh, there's his Instagram for everybody. It's Oscar's O-C- O-S-C-A-R-S-P-S-H. And for all you guys who already know, he uh, does all the lovely jersey embroidering stitched with handmade love and care. And everything comes out amazing. He's hooked us all up. With our jerseys, Coach Ed was rocking his Schneider all playoff series. I had my troop out and about, <clears throat> Mikey with his Zibby. So, Oscar, what do you got to say for us, buddy? What do you think went wrong here? Yeah, no, I mean, I posted about this. Thanks for having me, guys. And good season, great season for you guys. And, uh, you know, I can't wait for next season to see what you guys got in store for us. But, Coach, you know, Coach, we're going to have to work on a new ad, you know, for, for, yeah, for next season. Yeah, we got to do something. We gotta step it up. So All right. maybe maybe we'll make an ad saying you got that old Panera and you want to turn it to something. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> oh please. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I don't want to start the rumors now, but yeah, obviously disappointing. I am not surprised. My bracket did not have the Rangers coming out of the first round, which everybody was like, "Oh wow, really?" I'm like, "No." I mean, we we weren't as uh, I guess you could say as aggressive as we were. Well, Maybe someone might not say aggressive, but as smart as we were at the trade deadline. So I, I love the moves we did the season prior with really good uh, pieces that got us so far. Um, and then it was a complete 180, in my opinion, from what happened at the trade deadline. But, yeah, I mean, that's my opinion, yeah. right? Yeah, I think we were all excited. I saw you posted a lot of uh, Patrick Kane jerseys, including my own. Um, I have zero regrets on getting that jersey. Uh, later on this episode, I'm going <laughs> to defend my boy a little bit because a lot of things stirring around Instagram and Twitter and everything is a little upsetting and disturbing yeah. to me, but we won't get into that now. Um, but, yeah, you touched on that you uh, pulled the Cousin Ed and you picked the you didn't pick the Rangers making it out of the first round because he did that last year, by the way. <laughs> um, so, uh, I guess just give us your reasoning, uh, on why you thought that. And then, um, before we let you go, I guess, give us a little bit of a Rangers, uh, send off for the season and how you're, how you're feeling. Yeah, no, just a big thank you to you guys and all of the, uh, listeners here and all the fans that, uh, trusted me this year, uh, demand was way more than I could keep up with, um, to a point where I was just. I started feeling bad telling people, sorry, I can't do your jersey. I'm still still telling people, sorry, I won't be able to, you know, commit to doing your jersey. So I feel really bad this summer. I got to really sit down, put pen to paper and really expand to get ready for next season for you guys. Um, 
So, but just a big thank you to this whole community that trusted me um, with their reverse retros, with their all-star game jerseys. I did over two dozen cane jerseys, like, like just off a of line, dude. It was, it was nuts. Um, and I'm still, I'm still doing it. I didn't know it was uh, that many. More. I only, oh, I really dude, only yeah, posted like, like two or three. 26. I, oh yeah. I only posted three. Cause I was like, how many times do people want to see a cane yeah, jersey? You can't post the same one. Oh yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think I, I think I'm at about 26 caners so far, which is wow. Yeah, I did not expect, but yeah, and, and just as many or more All Star Game jerseys too from this year that that were uh, phenomenal. Even though I, I felt bad for people that got the jersey, and they're like, oh, they didn't even wear it in the game, and I'm like, yeah, that was the NHL's decision to not, you know, commercialize the the white Eastern Conference uh, jersey, which I loved better than the black one. You know, that yeah. was. That was a good looking jersey. I mean, I made one for myself. Everybody, everybody was like, "When are you going to make more of those?" And I'm like, "I'm not. Sorry. It's just, <laughs> it's, it's just one. It's it's mine. Yeah. You know, it's it's a pain in the butt to take the crest off. But yeah, just a big thank you uh, to everybody. And just to go back to the question is, I just didn't like the moves that were made throughout the season. I thought the whole Revo situation with him, you know, being let go like that. I'm like, if you knew this, if this was going to get to that that point then why didn't you do something in the off season right to move him out why hold him and and really kind of kind of disrespect him he was he, he was being embraced and welcomed by the fan base so well and we loved him on the air so much and it gave the team that kind of swagger that we all never you know we haven't seen in a long time and then you get rid of him like that um that was disheartening and then um I was liking the Tarasenko trade until it didn't really get Panarin going. Um, and then I'm like, okay, well, we just got a, we got another star. We got another veteran star and I love Vlad, man. Um, and then we got Kane who we know was hurt. You know, you know, he needs, he needs hip surgery, right? He's going to have to like, why would you get a player? Granted, I love Kane, you know, this um, superstar, but why would you get a player that's hurt to help you, you know, go for a deep run? So just, did it make sense? Best thing about all those trades was Mikola. You know, that was that was a bright start, but, you know, I, I hope we keep him. I hope he stays because he deserves some money after his performance in the playoffs and the end of the season. Yeah, I can't disagree with you there with uh, with Mikola. Um, I said it on one of our recent episodes that he was going to be a very important pickup, probably more important than Tarasenko and Kane uh, mm-hmm. throughout the playoffs, and I think – we only got to see him in one round, but I think that turned out to be true because um, I think Valley said a stat that him and Schneider were only on the ice for three high danger chances going into game six, something like that. So I'm not sure exactly what they ended up with, but I mean, as a third pairing defenseman for both of those guys, it's pretty impressive. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's obviously this hardening. You guys got anything to add on what uh, Oscar just said? I mean, I, I feel can't. For Revo. Yeah, yeah Mike, I mean, obviously love Revo. I still gotta, I still gotta trust. I mean, I loved Revo too. I still gotta trust what Drury was, what he had in his mind. He might not have had. You got to keep in mind it's a business that they got to do what's right. Maybe at the time in the beginning of the season, it wasn't available to do certain things, and then all of a sudden it became more of a reality that they had to move him out. You know, so he had. A, you know, I'm only speculating, of course. I mean, it's just like you are. Um, I don't think he's that kind of person. I don't know if there's anybody in the higher ups that's telling him, you know, get rid of him, screw it. You know, I, those are the kind of things you don't really know. It's a little shaky after uh, Davidson left, but I kind of trust what, what Drury does. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the problem with Revo, sorry, Mike, you go next, but the problem with Revo is I don't think he would have been able to keep up with the Devils anyway. I think it would have been pretty pretty rough for him to skate. Um, I mean, look at the fourth line that we did have. All three guys that are pretty pretty good skaters, uh, all things considered. So Revo, that was definitely lacking that. I mean, I was still upset about the trade. I think he could have helped in the locker room, but to have a player like that not playing, it's kind of pointless. Um, but, Mikey, go ahead. I think uh, one big name that wasn't mentioned that the Rangers obviously made a move for was uh, Vinny T, Vin- Vincent Trochuk. I thought that was a uh, a good move for them this season. You know, I know he didn't really show up this first round, but I think he showed a lot of promise too. Yeah, yeah. How many uh, Trocheck jerseys did you make? Couple, yeah, a couple. Yeah. Uh, everybody likes uh, Vinny T. 
I uh, got a couple more, you know, in the uh, in the line to do as well. But yeah, I, I like that pickup. You're right, Mikey. That was a good pickup. But I think we were all hoping that we were going to get a little more out of him with Panarin, right? A little better chemistry, and just didn't happen, right? Kind of, you know, Stroman. That Stroman Panarin connection was just uh, pretty pretty strong. Um, but you know, there's still time, I guess. Well, who knows? Well, during the regular yeah. season, they had good connection for the most part. I mean, I know they kind of bounce around and juggle the lines a little bit, but Panarin still put up ninety something points. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, if you want to, if you want to say anything about Panarin before we let you go, go for it. Um, I know you were kidding <laughs> about changing the Panarin jersey, um, but is that something you actually believe in or wouldn't mind seeing? Yeah, uh, well, I, I mean, I like bread. I do. I like the matter his whole time here, but. Ultimately, it's like uh, when you've got such a bright future that you see in front of you with Miller, um, with Kako, with Hedl, with Schneider, um, you're going to need money. And, you know, it's like, do, do you let those key pieces go? And you've got other, you know, pieces in, in the wheelhouse there and in, in the uh, in the farm, you know, that you want to use like Cooley and Othman um, and even my boy, Zach Jones, Fonzo Ball wearing his uh his gamer Ooh. over here. I'd love to see. I'd love to see him, you know, get another another shot. But with uh, Mikola joining, I think that's uh, not likely to happen. But yeah, no. I, ultimately, it's it, like you said, it's a business, right? And um, I would budget or allocate that um, better than giving eleven million dollars to a player. Hey, I can't yeah. disagree with you. I'm very frustrated. I was frustrated at the last playoffs. I thought. He would shine more this year in this playoff. I mean, even Valaket was saying he's coming in with a chip on his shoulder. Drury called him out last year. He wants to prove something, and he throws up a goose egg. I mean, right. to me, that's right. the whole, you know, all those power plays, and he's had nothing. That's, to me, the uh, the downfall of the, of the series right there. Agreed. Totally agree. Yeah. That was yeah, the difference. Out. Player like Panera needed to step up. Everywhere else we played, even yeah, really everywhere else here, we played so. with them. Yeah. Yeah. And last year was similar. We were kind of waiting for him to get that big game winning goal or that tying goal or something in game six or game seven. And it just never happened. Um, so, yeah, it was very disappointing. Um, so, Oscar, what do you got for the fans? A uh, little bit of a send off for the season. Um, I'm sure we'll have you on next season as long as you keep your partnership up with us. Yeah. Um, but no, you're, you're, you're always family now, no matter what. Um, but yeah, uh, end of the season episode with Oscar. So what do you got, bud? Yeah, no, definitely committing. Um, committing to you guys for sure for next season. I'm definitely in. and want to help grow this community. This not, you know, not just this Jersey community, but this Ranger community. Uh, believe it or not, I've had a lot of Devil fans actually trust me. You know, I've got, I've got some uh, – uh, Hughes jerseys to do. Uh, the new Hughes, not Jack. What's what's his name? Quinn. Um, Quinn Hughes. Yeah, a lot no, of maybe, maybe you say maybe Luke. you say no to them, and then yes to the Ranger fans. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, no. But I got I got Luke Hughes. Yeah, it's right. You're right, Luke Hughes. I got a lot of Luke. Um, so I'm sure Neil's going to be happy with that. Um, you know, for for his fan base. But uh, just a big thank you to everybody. Um, really, it's been overwhelming and, and really great to meet all these people. I mean, we met the one fan from Germany who came, you know, who came over Amazing. for a couple of games and I did, you know, a bunch of jerseys for his collection. Uh, so that was, that was great. So yeah, count me in for sure for next season. Um, it's going to be interesting. Remember it's our last year of Adidas jerseys. So got to get ready for uh, the Fanatics deal to, to go in and, you know, maybe hopefully I'll, I'll make some friends this summer and give you guys some insider information uh, on what right. we can expect for uh, for the new Fanatics deal. Yeah, so uh, actually, yeah, that's a great idea. We'll definitely have you on the off season once we start to hear more. Um, we're gonna have we're gonna have some some time to kill in the off season, so I think that's a good idea. Yeah, be, be a lot of fun. But yeah, big thank you to you guys. I hope you guys loved your jerseys, Coach. I like seeing those videos on Instagram. You with the Schneids. Uh, jersey Schneid, up Schneid's on the bridge. Is a 2 0 with the Schneid's jersey. That's right. Let's keep it going, man. It's a shame we won't see Liberty. Oh, oh, hang on. Don't want to spoil anything, but you know, rumors are that for MetLife, we might have the Liberty back. So you know, that's just pure speculation. And, uh, you know, but that's that's the rumor mill that we'll have one more Liberty. Um, nice. And then hopefully we'll retire the Liberty for the next 20, 
five years. <laughs> Wait, what happened? Wait, what happened? What do you mean from MetLife? Supposedly, the Winter Classic is going to be at MetLife. Uh, stadium Series. Or stadium is it Winter series, Classic I mean. or Stadium Series? I think Stadium Series. Yeah, Stadium Series. I think the Winter Classic is – I forget. I don't want to miss Seattle, it. Seattle, um, Vegas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. yeah. so Seattle, um, Vegas, they got the Winter Classic. They got – Another, we got another All Star Game jersey. You know that All Star jersey that's coming out for Toronto, uh, but the the Stadium Series jerseys, I'm I'm super pumped. I've got some ideas that I put together, and I'm actually making a jersey myself, like from scratch. Um, wow. So I'll be I'll be unveiling it this uh, this summer. It's, that's awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be a nice. throwback. Gonna have some felt numbers. It's gonna be Ooh, legit. Yeah. Like this. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice sweatshirt. I don't know if you two, uh, uh, yeah. And then you got the throwback Rangers jersey behind you. That you yeah, know, oh yeah, coach. So I brought this bad boy out for you because this is one that we talked about at the live show. But uh, you know, some this is going out tomorrow morning, uh, wrapping it up. Well, Ron Greshner, so young Greshner. That's a nice jersey. Little little throwback for you. And then we got Sean from Hockey Night in New York's uh, his uh, Nelson All Star Game jersey going out tomorrow morning as well. <laughs> So, <laughs> Brock Nelson. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Good for yeah, you. Yeah, man, it's it's fun. It's fun. I you know I got the shop here is just it's packed. It's so much. I got so much to do still, and you know, thankfully, you know, I've got a good following and you know, a lot of people just trust me with their jersey and they're they're telling me like look it's literally no rush just you know when you get it to me but i know i try to prioritize you know as they come in and when people need them right away but i just yeah a big thank you to everybody that that uh trusted me with your jerseys this season i didn't i didn't notice any other schneider jerseys at the games by the way <laughs> Yeah, you don't. You didn't see him in the. Well, you certainly didn't see him in the store, but I didn't see any Schneiders in the crowd. I, I think I saw like one or two Heatles, um, and that was you know a little heartbreaking. And you only saw the the Panarins, the the Foxes, and Chesterkins. You know. I didn't notice any Heatles on the ice either. So. <laughs> uh, he got his contract man that's all that matters right? yeah hopefully i mean he's another regular season uh hero i guess but now hopefully all these guys can pull it together this is a wake-up call for everybody including us fans i think we were spoiled last year um yeah. but we'll get into that in the episode but uh oscar thank you so much for joining us i know it was last minute today but you're the man always drop thank everything you in your shop over there and Ranger fans, uh, this is only the beginning. So next year, Oscar and I have already spoken about a few things we want to do next year, viewing parties, more live shows, things like that. So definitely yep. stay tuned for that. All right, boys. Thanks Thank so you. All right, Thanks, Oscar. You guys. Later. Let's go, Rangers. Yes, sir. Oh. All right. Well, that was good. I mean, uh, I think we kind of teased all the topics that we were going to cut co- that we're going to cover uh, in this episode. Um, but before we get into the heavy Rangers talk, we wanted to bring on our next guest. Uh, the, our, I guess it's a recurring guest, technically. Uh, Mikey150 from North of the Wall up in uh, Newfoundland. Um, he's going to here to talk a little Bruins and get things off his chest. And uh, let's talk about this meltdown because, I mean, hey, the Rangers had a meltdown, but I think we can all – Thank God that we're not Bruins fans, right? Because it'd be disappointing, but it couldn't have been that disappointing. So, Mike, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yep, yep. So uh, very yeah, unfortunate. The Bruins, so the Bruins went up what three one on the series. Um, yep. I guess just take us through it. I mean, you kind of you kind of already told me all of it before we hopped on. So hopefully you didn't waste it. But I think you still got. Nah, it. don't worry. I got tons to get through. <laughs> a lot to get off my chest. <laughs> no, it was rough, man. Like, I tell you, game three was one of the best games I've seen the Bruins play in probably three or four months. And after game three, Bruins went up two to one. And it was like, the Bruins are back. Series is over. We got this. No problem. And, man, they came out. They played they play another good game in game four. It was great. Game five, they completely came out and laid an egg. I mean, it was it was very similar to the Rangers game three against the Devils when all of a sudden it was like it was like, you know, when you put two magnets together that are the wrong way and they just go. Whoa. It was like that's what it felt like whenever the puck came near a Bruins stick. It was any time the Bruins touched the puck. It was a turnover. 
It was yeah. unbelievable. It was like, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things you just watch and you're like, where does this come from? You haven't done this once all season, not once. And then all of a sudden it's like, you guys don't know how to pass. You don't know how to move to space. You don't know how, like, you don't know how to do anything. You forgot every fundamental bit of hockey knowledge that you have. And it, it was just, it was painful to watch. It was genuinely painful to watch. But yeah, I think all of our fans can uh, agree with what you just said that that's kind of that's exactly what happened to the Rangers in game seven. And they were missing simple passes, simple uh, tape to tape passes. They were making unnecessary ones that weren't there. And uh, I watched most of that Bruins game and I saw a lot of that happening as well. And I think the nerves just set in for both teams and it's very unfortunate. It's, it's very surprising because these guys are professionals and especially a team like the Bruins, it seemed like they had ice in their veins the entire season battling through injuries in the beginning of the season. Bergeron obviously having some uh, drama behind the scenes with his father and deciding to play in game 82. Um, yeah. So I guess, how do you feel about that? I mean, I know that was a touchy subject. I mean, I don't know if I got the full story, but what do you know about I'm, it? How do you feel about it? And what exactly was his injury that he sustained? I mean, of course, this has to happen against Montreal. I, I mean, hindsight's always twenty twenty, but I don't. I, I would. I would have done exactly as Montgomery did. So, first of all, Bergeron's father's having health issues, and he wanted to play in front of his father. So, full send. Like you know been on the Bruins for over a decade. You can do what you want in game 82. Uh, he'd also been resting Bergeron, Krejci, McAvoy, Lindholm, Marshawn, Pasternak throughout the entirety of, I'd say, the last 15 games of the season. I'd say each one of them got at least four or five games off in that span. And the entire team hadn't played together since, I would say, about, like I said, about 15 games prior to the start of the playoffs. Because, you know, the Bruins won the President's Trophy pretty early. So, I mean... I don't disagree with him playing the full team in game 82. That being said, you have a freak injury, whatever happened to Linus Allmark, you know, undisclosed. They said, he, you know, after the playoffs were done, he says it's some sort of debilitating injury, which is sort of a cop out, but don't even get me started on that. Uh, well, I Bergeron also, on that, but we'll yeah. <laughs> and Bergeron hurts his back. You know, he has a herniated disc. It's a bummer. It happens, you know, you can't again he's playing in front of his father who's not doing well so you can't really fault montgomery for playing him so i mean i don't disagree with that in one bit you know it sucks looking back after the fact but you know it is what it is yeah but all season long the big thing about the bruins i know we had i know i'm pretty sure we discussed it on the air was how they were able to just fill in guys in spots and it was seamless when a guy was out so the yep. fact that Bergeron missed a couple of games against the Panthers, I don't see that should have be should being an issue. To me, the big thing is with the Rangers, with Colorado, with Boston. I see these other teams coming out. I'm watching last night Carolina with the Devils. Every time a Devil touches the puck, they're hit. Every time. Mm -hmm. Normally, I I'd agree with you. Yeah. No, I'd, right. normally I'd agree with you. But first, you're, play, you're playing up, matching up against Alexander Barkov, who's a phenomenal centerman. In the playoffs, when you can't win faceoffs in the offensive zone or in the defensive zone and on special teams, you're going to lose. And that's one of the main things that crushed the Bruins in the latter half of that series. They couldn't win faceoffs because Bergeron was out. And I would say, normally, I agree with you that the next man up thing was it all year for the Bruins. But Bergeron, I think, was the one guy that that next man up might not have applied to because there's just nobody that's as good at faceoffs. Well, you, you're not, you can't, you're not wrong with that because the Rangers were horrible on faceoffs. They, they kill you. Kicked out of them. Yeah, it's unbelievable. They, you just, they get control of the puck and that's it. There's a minute ragged off the clock. You know, it's tough. It's it's a difficult situation. I just feel that. In a, in a playoff series, they talk about it on every show you're watching now. That's completely different. There's got to be a sense. There's got to be more of a sense of urgency, a more of a sudden death mentality. Every shift, every game, cliche, yeah. whatever you want to call it. And I mean, I I didn't watch every Bruins game start to finish, but the Panthers came out, and so did the Devils when they had to, and they just played with that urgency that I didn't see the Devils. I didn't see the Rangers or the Bruins. I watched all of game seven with the Bruins. 
just wasn't there. They had a spurt in yeah. the third period where they got the goals, and that was it. Yeah, and it was largely reactionary, too. Like, in game six, that was the back and forth. It was, you know, Florida would score, the Bruins would score. Florida would score, Bruins. And we were always chasing. I think we took the lead at one point. But, like you said, the urgency wasn't there. It was like, just even though we were behind, it was like they just seemed like they thought they were going to win. And it just, you know, it wasn't great. You know, I don't like that attitude. It's just, I don't know how that gets into a dressing room with, you know, Bergeron as the captain. But kind of it was tough to watch yeah a lot of things i saw sorry mike ahead no i was just gonna say i think it just fell on so much pressure on boston so much pressure on the rangers like you know these other teams had no pressure to win they had no pressure to move on you know they just came out and played hockey but the bruins had one of the best seasons ever and they got to get past the first round all that pressure is on them you know the rangers went from the Eastern Conference Championship last year, acquiring Kane, acquiring all these big names, and now, you know. Well, yeah. on that same note, think of how Florida must have felt. You know, they've been the odds-on favorite the last two years going yeah. in, hey? Yep. Now this year, they come in, they got no expectations. They're, like, playing loose. They're having a great time in the playoffs, so. Yeah. Something to be said yeah. for that, I suppose. The buzz that I saw around was like the Bruins kind of obviously glide into the playoffs. I think they clinched their playoff spot like what October thirty first or yeah. something like that. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Um, <laughs> but no, the the Panthers were playing uh, meaningful hockey games the last month and a half of the season. They were literally clawing their way into the playoffs. Um, yeah, and then they just continued that style of play right into the playoffs, and they knew they had to win every single game, and they played that way. Yeah. The last month and a half, whatever month left of the season, all the way through the first round. And I even watched the game against uh, Toronto last night or the night before, and they're still playing that way. And led yeah. by a player like Matthew Kachuk, that team's dangerous right now, especially if Bobrovsky can keep it together. Um, yeah, I was going to say, they, they've got the goaltending when it mattered. When Bob went down at the end of the year, that kid Alex Lyon stepped up in such a big way. He pulled that team through the last 10 games of the season. I think he was 9-1-0, and something like that. Yeah. He had some ridiculous record. So he had an absolutely fantastic close to the season. And he played great games one to three in that series. He did. He played fantastic. So yeah. shout out to him. Yeah. So you bring up goaltending. I mean, you, you touched yeah. on it. I said I was going to get you going. Um, so yeah. the Vezina Trophy, or, the, or what we assume is going to be the Vezina Trophy uh, winner this year, Linus Elmark, uh, came out and said that he was playing this whole series with a debilitating injury. Um, yeah. Personally, I, I, I'll just comment on it real quick. I think that's crazy, especially a team like the Bruins. They were riding both goalies the entire season. Um, You'll go further into the actual statistics in a minute, I'm sure. Um, But that's just unacceptable to me. I mean, I think Coach Ed and I, he could touch on it as well. We trust our players to tell us if they're ready to go. And yeah, usually we could tell whether or not they're telling the truth or our players usually just don't want to play anyway, but that's besides the point. (laughs) But uh, for a player of his caliber to 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 not undisclose an injury or something like that. But when you know you have a very a reliable backup behind you and all you got to do is make it to back past the first round and then you'll probably see the net again in round two at some point. You got to be unselfish there and just sit, sit the game out and let someone else take it over. So, Mikey, what do you think? Oh, boy. <laughs> I, I mean – it, first of all, it's it's a cop out to come out after the series and say you have a debilitating injury. All right, if I was to say to you that I'm debilitated, you're fairly worried about me, are you not? <laughs> yeah. Like, you I don't come out and say I have a debilitating not. injury, but but I'm good to go for game one through six. Like that, that doesn't make any sense to me. I'm sorry, it does not. And like you said, you have the best. The what is it? What's the trophy they get for the two best goalies? Um, Anyway, the Bruins won the, that trophy for the best two goalies. They rode Swayman all year just as just as much as Olmark. I, I mean, Olmark never played more than two consecutive games in the season. Swayman can – he can play. He's a gamer. And it just it really didn't make sense seeing – you know, you, you watch – you've seen anybody play hurt. You can tell when they're hurt. You can tell when they're not 100%. You can tell when they're not playing – at the top of their game. It was, it was pretty obvious that Allmark was in that state. And like you said, it just, it doesn't make sense to me that they wouldn't put Swayman in if he was playing with a quote unquote debilitating injury. So I, I, don't know, I could go on for hours about this. But. Yeah. But let, let's keep it real. It was three games to one. No one in their right mind would have said that 
Florida is going to come back and win three games straight. I mean, the Omar has you, this, slight, this injury or not. Buddy, I still remember 2010 when the Flyers came back against the Bruins, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't count a team out at 3-1. <laughs> I don't can't either, do it. But I'm saying, I'm saying yeah. from a, one of these runs, I'm sure too. No, We're yeah. Close. I'm yeah. saying from a coach's standpoint, he probably figured yeah. out that he's riding out the injury. Everything's all right. We'll win it tonight. Whatever, you know. Yeah. We'll move on. Yeah, I, I can see that being the case. But when you get into game, what was it? Game he six, when he gets shelled five. for seven goals. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Shouldn't have been in the net for seven goals seven in a game in the playoffs. In, in Boston, too, to yeah. game seven. Yeah. Well, at that point, that's tough. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't pretty. But, I don't know, lots of strange coaching mistakes. The lines being mixed up was another one. I, the, the Bruins played pretty well the same set of lines for almost the entire season. And in the playoffs, I just went back through the lineups. There was one instance where one of the lines was put back together, and that was the check line with Pasternak, Zaka and Krejci. But outside of that, there was no instance where the lines that they used in the regular season were together through that whole series. It was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. I don't That's know. I think art to me. I don't know why they would do that coach. Uh, yeah. I think, well, first of all, I kind of remember another scenario where they kept saying it with the Bruins, I brought it up, especially is that they were able to, mix and match guys all over the place because they are that good and everybody plays the game. So to me, you're kind of contradicting yourself. I know that happened this year because I remember talking about injuries and the way they slot in. Second of all, I think we're playing, placing it way too much on the coach. These guys should have came out and kicked the Panthers' ass. Yeah, 100%. Like the Rangers, I agree with that. We, these guys should not have to be motivated. I'm sorry. you got to be kidding me. The Stanley Cup's on the wall in the locker room. They're ready to do, go for it. That's your trophy. Yeah. They got to want it. They got to want it bad. And the, they just, some of them, you can't, at this time of year, you can't put it. The coach means something, but don't put it all on the coach. Coach got us there. We're there. Let's step it up and everybody do their job. And that's what Florida's doing. That's what the Kraken's doing. The coach prepared yeah. them all year. They played a certain way, and that's how they're going still. The Rangers were topsy turvy in some instances this year, and that's how they were in the playoffs. They weren't consistent. How do we beat a team five one three times and then lose four games? Doesn't make any sense. They got to know they can't put it on the coach. I'm sorry, not in this time of year. No, coming from a coach. That. Coming from a coach, Coach Ed himself. Coming from a player who had coaches to a coach, yes. Can't yep. put it on a coach. Each individual's got to look at themselves in the mirror and say, "I didn't, I didn't do my job in that game." Because even when they went up three to two, game should have been over in game seven. The momentum was all in their favor. It was over. So whatever happened in six and the other games wouldn't have mattered if they would have won. And they let that game get away. They came back and they took a three-two lead. Yeah, that's on. That's I on agree. the coach. They choked. I mean, uh, yeah. Sometimes you just choke and the players feel it. You know, they feel it worse than us. The, the finality of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's All right, Mike, before... Go ahead. Now, before we let you go, obviously our two teams are out. I don't know how your bracket's doing, but ours are probably looking pretty crappy. Who you got coming out of the East and who you got coming out of the West? <sighs> That's a tough one. Um... I still like Edmonton out of the West. I think they're coming out of the West for sure. I'm on the bandwagon for Edmonton. And honestly, I, I'm going with Florida out of the East. They, after watching that series against the Bruins, that, that's a team that reminds me of what the Bruins looked like in 2011. It's, a, it's one of those teams you watch the team and you're like, they could win a Stanley Cup. They keep playing like this. Not a question. So yeah. I'm saying Florida will come out. Saying they they're can do it. Three, they're winning 3 2 at the end of two. Yeah, they're confident, man. You, they just took down the Giant. Let me tell you something. I, I watched the game the other night and against the Bruins, too. I, watching Matthew Kachuk is pretty special, man. That guy is He's evolved. a shithead. That guy's evolved in everything. <laughs> He's the new Brad Marchand. You watch. Give him five years, he'll have a dozen suspensions. 
I don't know about that, but he's a Brad Marchand now, not when he was uh, not five years ago. Yeah. Don't be bitter, Mike. You got to respect the team that beat you. I can do both. I can be bitter and respect the hell out of them. That kid can play. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, a couple straight years, 100-plus points, no doubt about it. Yep. All right, Mikey. Well, thanks for coming on. I know it's a little bit later over north of the wall, so uh, we'll be yeah. back to get some rest for tomorrow, whatever you got to do. Yeah. Um, hey, quick right. shout-out. This kid, Chris Wagner. I don't know if you ever – remember Wagner? Suited up for the Bruins for a couple years. Yeah. Local kid. Mm-hmm. He's a UFA at the end of this year. I don't think he's going to uh, be re-signed, but – fantastic career he led the providence bruins for probably the last three years wore a letter for them making 200k a year fantastic season shout out to chris wagner fantastic bruin yeah yeah no they had a great season it's very unfortunate uh, i guess for you guys that it happened the way it did or it uh finished the way it did but hey that's why they play the games right so uh yeah fans just because uh the bruin season's over and the Rangers, Mikey150, still going to be bringing us the wrap-ups of each round and each week, uh, keeping you guys updated around the league. Uh, we'll release those on YouTube and with our episodes whenever we release them. And, uh, yeah, he did a great job this year. Every video gets better and better. And uh, I look forward to next year. Hopefully we can um, continue on this ride, baby. Let's go. Go Bruins. Appreciate it, Mikey. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mikey. Thanks, right, Thanks Mike. Take it easy. Good to see you smile, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Later, brother. See you, boys. All right, guys. Yeah, I mean, that was a little bit of a nice break, so we don't have to feel the pain of the Rangers. We got a, some, a little bit more pain from the Bruins fan himself, Mikey150. And um, actually, our usual host, Cousin Ed, sent us a little video kind of to get some things off his chest. So me, Mikey Producies, and Coach Ed are going to take a little bit of a break so you can listen to Coach Ed for his little four-minute rant. Uh, not Coach Ed, Cousin Ed for his little four-minute rant here. So, uh, Mikey, cue it up, baby. Hey, Ranger fans, Cousin Ed here. Uh, sorry I couldn't make it for tonight's episode, but I wanted to share my thoughts on the Rangers' seven-game series with New Jersey. Uh, I mean, New Jersey made the adjustments they needed to make. They outplayed the Rangers. They outwilled them. They hounded them for loose pucks. Uh, there was two Devils for every one Ranger on the loose pucks for all four of those losses. Uh, it was just an overall bad performance by the Rangers. Give New Jersey some credit, too, though. They played well. Um, you know, the sting of the loss is just starting to wear off. I'm starting to look ahead to the off season. Uh, I'm trying to think, what can the Rangers even do to change things? Uh, you know, they could fire the coach. That's obviously a topic that's going to be discussed Um I'm sure Coach Ed's not going to want that. Personally, I don't really care. I don't think Gallant's that good of a coach. I think he's a a good player's coach. He definitely uh, makes the team feel um, that they're liked, and he listens to them, and that's a good side of coaching for sure. He's a good manager of people. I don't think he's a good tactician. I think his game is uh, very dinosaur-ish, you know, get a deep cycle. All those things need to happen, but there's no structure to it. Right. So it's not just uh, you can't just be preaching. We got to get it deep. We got to get it deep. There's got to be some X's and O's into that process. There's got to be some targeted dump ins like Valaket talks about. I wish Valaket had any interest in coaching because I'd hire him immediately if I were Chris Jury. Um, there's a lot of questions on free agency. You know, we got Patrick Kane and Vladimir Tarasenko and Nico Mikola are unrestricted free agents. Uh, Kako is signed. Uh, he's got a year left, and then he's an RFA. Uh, Lafreniere and Miller are currently RFA. Uh, they need to get new contracts, and we only have about $12 million in space, so all these pieces aren't going to fit unless money is moved out. But who can you even move? Truba, Panarin, Zabanajad, Kreider, Trocek all have no movement clauses. Fox and Shesterkin, you don't want to move. Um, overall, uh, it's going to be a tough offseason to make any kind of substantive changes unless you move the kids. And I wouldn't do that. Uh, In fact, I would commit to them. Uh, I think the greatest failure of this organization throughout this rebuild has been their inability to commit to Capococco and Alexi Lafreniere and develop them into stars in this league. And I think they have turned them into third-line grinders, which you could pick up in free agency every year in a one-year deal. So 
you know, I'd like to see a, a commitment to them uh, and giving them the opportunity to run with it for more than a five-game stretch. You know, I'm talking full season. Kako with Zabanajad, Lafreniere in the top six, power play time, penalty killing time. I want to see them grow as players uh, this season. And, and if they're not going to commit to them, then they should consider moving them. But we're going to be in a dark ages very soon if that happens. Zabanajad, Kreider, Panarin, Truba, all approaching or over the wrong side of 30. Um, in a couple of years, uh, they're not going to be in their prime anymore, and we're going to need the Kakos and Lafreniers and Heatles of the world to, to be ready. And uh, I just don't think we're, we're doing that correctly as an organization. I think the Rangers need to reassess that, uh, and they need to be honest with themselves and really strongly consider a full commitment to the youth. Uh, the last thing I'll say uh, before I go is uh, Artemi Panarin ripped that A off his chest and put it on Ryan Lindgren. I, I, if you can't trade him because of his no move clause, if he doesn't want to go um, and nobody wants him, whatever, then take his A away. Uh, it's not a, just a symbolic thing. It means something and he uh, hasn't earned it. So i got to figure out a way to light a fire under him if he's going to be here because we're going to need him more than just his 90 points in the regular season, which are important to get to the playoffs, but we're going to need him in the playoffs. So with that, I'll sound off. Uh, I'm sure the boys are taking good care of you. Sorry I couldn't make it, and I'll see you all next week. Let's go Hurricanes. <laughs> Great job by Cousin Ed. That was awesome. Uh, yeah, he definitely brought up a lot of good points. We're going to touch on those. Um, but, yeah, before we move forward, I think we should address what he left off with. And uh, I think he brings up a very good point, a very good idea, and that is to strip Panarin of his A. Um, like we said earlier, we touched on it with Oscar. Um, obviously Panarin is a phenomenal regular season player. He puts up 90 to hundred points consistently for the last, what, three or four years. He's so much fun to watch, uh, during the regular season. I'll keep saying that during the regular season, he's a lot of fun to watch. He gets frustrating at times, but sometimes, you know, that comes with the, the territory of a superstar who has the puck on his stick quite a bit over the course of a game. Um, but yeah, I think that's a phenomenal idea. I think, I, I think that a was put on his chest as a product of, of Davidson. Um, when he was the president, when he brought Panarin over, when he signed him because he had Panarin in Columbus as well. So I think he kind of just gave him the a, as a favor, or not as a favor, but kind of like included in his deal, maybe in a way. And I think at this point he's proven that he's not going to lead by example. And I don't see him being the, the player that's going to be in the locker room, getting in people's faces or and guys, we got to get deep. Up too. This is what needs to ha happen. I don't see either one of those things happening. So as an assistant captain myself in the past, I know what those responsibilities are. And I just don't see Panarin even come to that. And I think obviously Ryan Glen Lindgren is a phenomenal candidate to be the next day. Mikey produces. What do you think? I think it just would have a negative effect on him. You know, um, if he stays on the team and you take that A off of him, I don't think it's going to motivate him the way that it should, unfortunately. I just don't see him as that type of person. He, I'm not going to sit here and say that he's not a phenomenal hockey player because that would be false, but he's not the type of, uh, he's not a coachable player like that. That's not how you get through to him. It's it's sad to say, but he, I don't think it, that's in him. You know, he is who he is, and I don't think there's any changing. I don't think there's any motivating. I don't think there's anything. You know, you can't go out and get a countryman and put him on the team and hopefully make him play better because that didn't work. Um, I think you guys are right. I think you and cousin Eddie are right. I think he doesn't need to have an A on his jersey, but I don't think it's going to help. To be honest. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that Coach Ed and I always um, toy with or go back and forth with, it, whether or not it's going to have a negative impact of a player, like sitting him or sitting her, um, taking them off the power play, taking them off the first line, whatever the case may be, we always go back and forth whether or not it's going to be a pot or even pulling the goalie in a game, I mean, which we've seen a lot of these playoffs. Whether or not that's going to have a negative impact on the goalie, that's a huge gamble to make. Um, so coach, I mean, why don't you touch on something like that from a coach's perspective uh, or, or well, just go on and how to handle a player like Panera. What do you think Gallant's doing wrong management's doing wrong or simply what's wrong in Panarin's head? Well, 
when you pick a captain or assistant captain, I mean, it's always said, not just by me, by everyone, either you're going to be that guy that's in everybody's face or you're going to lead by example. Gretzky wasn't a guy that was in everybody's face. He led by example. A lot of a lot of players are like that, a lot of captains. So, But to me, he's not doing either. So he needs to be sat down, said, look, we're going to, you know, we're going to give it to Lindgren and, and that's it. We ju- I just said before that it's a business. So the business is you're not good enough to be, you're not, you're not a captain material or assistant material. Take that pressure off. We're going to take the pressure off you. Do a little reverse psychology and say, look, Brad, we're going to take a little pressure off you. We want you to concentrate on certain things and we're going to give the aid to Lindgren or whoever. Lingrid's definitely my pick. Give it to VC. <laughs> I'm sure cousin Ed's going to be thrilled to hear that. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's definitely tough. Like I said, we all love watching Panarin play. I mean, Coach Ed probably has the most ups, ups and downs with Panarin as far as uh, superstar highlight real plays versus high levels of frustration. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, that's definitely a tough decision. Uh, I th- I saw some rumblings, or I saw today that one of his quotes. I, I didn't get a chance to catch the actual interview. I definitely want to do that. I want to see all the players exit interviews if they have them available. But Panera mentioned something that he started to get frustrated early on in the series, and instead of overcoming that and trying to bust out of it, he let it snowball on himself, and it just kept going and going, and the frustration just kept building, and it was hard for him to get past it or overcome it. Um, that's, that's the tough thing. I mean, me as a player, I was never the most offensive anyway, so I don't really know what it feel, feels like to go through a, a drought of not scoring. Um, I was obviously defense, a defenseman for most of my college playing career and stuff. So I, I can't really relate to that. The only thing I could say is that these guys are professionals and I'm getting tired of hearing the $11.5 million price tag on Panera. I don't care about the money. I know it's obviously important as a salary cap, but I don't care if he's getting paid $11.5 million or if he's getting paid $1.5. He's got to come out and play his game up to his ability. We're seeing players like VC, players like Tyler Mott, bust their ass every single shift of every single game, and they're getting paid pennies compared to Artemi Panera. You know, so whether you're getting, like I said, whether you're getting paid the league minimum or the league maximum, you just got to do your job. It's very simple. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the next topic I want to get into is just the overall lack of effort with um, the Rangers. And obviously the term no quit in New York has been floating around. Um, but with that, I want to bring on our next guest, um, someone who was faced with life challenges very early on in his life. And he was able to overcome them and never quit and never give up. And now you could see now you could see him on Instagram and around New York City, literally rollerblading on one leg, and just enjoying life to the fullest, day in and day out. And uh, I thought it would be good to bring him on. So without further ado, here's Alex Garrett of the Sports Spotlight Podcast. I had thank you for had, that intro, by the way. Ed, thank you. That you was, got it, Alex. Awesome. Yeah. Um, Alex had me on as a guest not too long ago on his Sports Spotlight podcast, so I wanted to return the favor. Um, Alex has had boots on the ground, or I guess I should say roller skate on the ground around Manhattan during these uh, Stanley Cup playoffs. So I wanted to get your opinion. Um, well, on... by the way, I'm here with my girlfriend, who's an Uber Ranger fan, so she's going to be <laughs> she's going to be fact checking everything I say right now. Okay, uh, but. <laughs> I thought, you know, after the first two games and Kreider doing, what, four or five goals in two days, that was historic. I thought maybe, come back to the Garden on home ice, they clinch it. But you know what? Um, the Devils gritted it. And, and I'll tell you, that change in goalie uh, really mattered. But I've got a question for all of you because, and nice to meet you guys as well. Coach Ed, I hear a lot about you and how important the line structure is to this team. So I'm going to ask about the kid line. But I, at first, I just want to say, all the moves made the tread deadline, it's almost not it's almost like we shouldn't have lost in the first round, right? So are you guys still happy with the moves? I was. I thought it carried us into the playoffs. Just everybody fell flat right at the wrong time. Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I guess that's been the the theme of uh, like I said, no quitting in New York and and it seemed like they quit in game seven. Um, but yeah, as far as the line makeups go, coach and I were we were all touching on that throughout the 
the playoffs, the season, and whatnot. So, Coach, I mean, yeah, what do you got to say? Kind of answer. I guess, Alex, you're 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 hosting my show now. I mean, you're <laughs> asking us questions. <laughs> yeah, that's Stepping right in, huh? <laughs> so, Coach, yeah, go ahead, answer Alex's question. I mean, to me, the whole difference is the power play. That was the difference. We got how many power play goals in the first two games? Cry to had four alone, like uh, Alex just touched on. Three and four, we had I think we had one or one or zero. It came down to the power play with our skill level. We got those guys at the trade deadline. The power play should have been solidified. They had enough time to gel and, and meld and everything, every other word you want to use. Power play made the difference. There's no way we should have lost those games with the power plays we were given. Can't blame it on the refs. We got power plays, plenty of them. That was the difference in the series to me. Well, I and obviously Igor saved the whole season as well. But and honestly, I've been working in radio, so I don't know if I can say I got a whole glimpse of the action. I saw a few games here and there, but uh, and that's why I turned to the podcast here because you guys cover it all for those who may not be every ever attuned to the games uh, daily. But I'll tell you, you mentioned the rollerblade, and uh, my dad just passed, and my dad's idea for me at eight years old was to do the rollerblading. And so I did a whole thing about how Wayne Gretzky's father impacted him by getting him into hockey. And my dad's impact has been getting me on the rollerblade. And I just, I feel very sim- uh, parallel to Wayne Gretzky. And I, I don't know, I just felt like I'd share that tonight. But no, as far as a, Panarin. That was a very nice story. You, uh, yeah, you shared another story with me. Um, I don't know if you wanted to do that as well on the show recently about your father. Well, I mean, yeah, we also got to touch the Stanley Cup together. That was pretty damn special. Nice. Nice. And um, actually, I have multiple jerseys just because that's who I am. So I had my Blackhawk jersey on that day because I knew he'd want to touch it in his Blackhawk gear. And that was really – um, that was special. His, his smile was so beaming. It was it was interesting. At first, I couldn't tell why I had a Yankee cap on, but we were going to the Yanks afterward. So he's like, take the cap off for the picture. I'm like, okay, I'll take the cap off for the picture. <laughs> but no, it was fun. And he had always had me around the garden. We just talked with one of the security guards back in the old MSG uh, to tell him my dad passed. And he was telling us stories about the 80s and the 90s being a security guard at the garden, Billy Connell. And I just thought, I love those insights, you know, just because when you think about it, next year's 30 years and, and what we – Sometimes I feel like the Rangers pride themselves on the nostalgia too much, right? So we what do we get every in in break period? Something about 1994 still. And it's like, well, we want something in 2024 now. So <laughs> <laughs> the big question is going to be is how we get there. It looks like Kane's not coming back, right? So uh, I don't know. It's it's It feels up in the air right now. So Yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I know you mentioned you didn't get to go to many games or you didn't see inside the garden, but I saw you rollerblading on Instagram a a lot outside the garden with the no quit in New York sign. And I'm sure you you saw a lot of ups and downs over the course of the the first round, the short playoffs that the Rangers had. So what was the environment like outside of of MSG during this this time? Oh, man. So we were there for the third game, game three, uh, first game, first home game of the playoffs. Uh, And the energy outside was electric. You had the no quit New York signs out. You had the big one that was right underneath the garden. It was a packed house, man. The energy was electric. And I think everybody leaving Tracks Bar and Grill, which we were at prior to pregame, uh, I think they were all looking forward to a win. Didn't happen. I Here's my, you know, my other thought is, is you watch two days earlier before the Rangers get knocked out. You see the Islanders lose on a overtime goal. And my question in my head I've been thinking is, do you want to die a slow and painful death like the Rangers seem to have done or or quickly end your season on an overtime goal? I feel like the slow and painful death was less gut-wrenching. Um, but I don't know. I I, <laughs> I guess they couldn't figure out Igor, uh, Schmidt. And that that maybe the Panthers will – the Hurricanes will now. Who knows? But um, you think the fans were giving up too outside or – Hell no. Parties? I mean, we were only in game one. I don't know how the energy was in game two of that – home series but so game, game four one, yeah game four overall it was uh it was a good energy and look we're new yorkers so i can't imagine we weren't pumped not pumped up the rest of the series and we're also a hopeful bunch right no quit new york so we were hopeful that that game six which they had ended up winning pretty big by the way uh hoping go back to the devils and win because the road team seems to have the advantage that whole series if you think about it 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Except, for game, yeah. Except for game seven. Except for game seven. Why is there – because I, I don't know what – but Gallant's name being fired has been rumored. Do you guys believe in that? Because I don't know. I just – I can't believe yeah. they're going to fire him yet, but maybe they will. It'd be hard for me to believe that as well. Um, I think it still remains to be seen. I think, as usual, the Rangers are going to stay very secretive about it until the actual decision is made. So I think it's kind of annoying that the, the reporters are kind of just talking and everyone's thrown in and around social media and it's it's gaining some legs. So, I mean, I don't know. Hopefully it's just rumors whether he gets fired or not. I still hope it's rumors and – no one's slipping the media any information without actually having a conversation with Gallant. Um, well, would, according to according to our boy EJ on NHL, they were talking about it extensively on uh, NHL tonight last night. He said, "Yeah, there they are rumors, but he has it from an inside source that it's co- a consideration." And Joe Quenville's the one that keeps coming up. That's what I've been hearing too. That would be interesting, considering Q was the guy who, you know, engineered that whole championship team for the Blackhawks, right? So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, the other one thing I want to say is that I'm not really rooting for the East Conference now. Actually, all my focus is on the Western Conference just because – Who you got? I want Edmonton. I want McDavid to get his ring, you know. I really just want to see that happen. I We talked about it before, uh, and I, I couldn't believe they were in seventh, sixth place at one point because of the talent they had, but that's how stacked the Western Conference was. Vegas has come back from his a little sophomore junior year slump, if you will. They've come back stronger this year, and it's going to be a challenge for Edmonton. But I really am, and I think because of the Kraken upset the Avalanche, that was the alarm bell to say, okay, what's going on in the West right now, right? Because you yeah. have Florida in the East, but Florida's been good. So as shocking as it was, you knew their time was going to come to make these big wins happen in the postseason. But we're talking about a second year team now in Seattle. <laughs> upsetting the champion uh, it's it, that's exciting to me and i happen to want the stars just because um i like um siggy and i think i think he's just a great player you but, can't want everyone to win alex you gotta pick somebody <laughs> in that series i would say that the stars overall though i think edmonton is just i'd say they are almost a favorite i had with the golden knights right now so gotcha gotcha but yeah i'm, I'm not rooting for carolina or the devils i don't even really want to Pay attention. And yes, I have devil gear, but this one stings too much to even wear it because they beat our rages. What can I tell you? You got all the gear. You're just, uh, you, you love everybody. You're just yeah. you're trying to make everyone happy out there, Alex, which is what I love about you. So uh, before we let you go, why don't you, I want, I want you to plug some of your shows. I mean, you mentioned you, uh, you do radio. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do uh, as your day job or for a living? Sure. One more thing. My favorite picture of my dad is him with Rod Bear. I don't know if you've oh, seen course. that one yet, but that was no. pretty special because um, Rod's been a great family friend for years or was a great yeah. family friend. But yeah. I was going to say I'm on uh, Spreaker, Spotify, Apple Podcasts at the Alex Garrett Podcast Network. And Ed and I, uh, Ed and I just hit it off uh, on Instagram. I'm like, let's do a radio show. I got him a podcast. I got him right before he hit hockey practice. I'm like, Oh, he's on the go talking to me. That was our first interview. So I reach out like that. I like to get new blood on the show, new people. And, yeah. and of course maintain those friendships that I've already built through the podcast. So Alex Garrett podcast network is where you can find my stuff. And I don't know if I should just drop the name that I did meet Wayne Gretzky when I was on his final game. I was there. They nice. had Wayne Gretzky says, meet me in the Ranger locker room and I'll get a picture and whatnot. I saw him take off wow. his sweater for the last time in the ho- in hockey. And um, this was in 1999. So it's almost 30 years now, which, uh, 25 years now, which is hard to believe. But um, it's amazing, Alex. Well, you got, I'm sure you got plenty of more stories. Uh, so we'll definitely have to have you back. Um, but I know you got a bus to catch with your lovely girlfriend. So we'll let you go. If there's anything else you want to plug before you go, or if there's anything else you want to get off your chest, from this disappointing uh, Ranger season. If your oh. girlfriend wants to get something off her chest and she's a huge Ranger fan, she's more than welcome. Um, she'll, she'll come on ahead. next time because, I, I don't know, we'll see. The <laughs> summer's going to heat up. No, I am I am disappointed, and i tell you why. Because uh, you talk about Panera and losing the A. I'm more concerned that the trade deadline moves that we made fell absolutely flat in the postseason. That is my main concern here because you're going to have what they call the kid line. You're going to have – the line with the, you know, the crider line. You're going to have all these different lines. 
But we brought these guys in to win a cup, right? And, and so for it not to happen is probably the most frustrating thing. Um, and, and I just – there's no answer for where they went flat except for Schmidt. That's how I see it right now. But it's very disappointing that those deadline moves did not pan out in the postseason. That's my main gripe with it. Yeah, well, we're definitely going to touch on those um, once you leave us. Um, so, yeah, like I said, if you want to plug anything else before you go. But other than that, thank you very much, Alex, for joining us. And uh, we'll definitely talk and we'll we'll have, have to join each other's shows once again. Let's go, Rangers. AlexGNYC.com. That's my website. There you go. And uh, nice to meet you, Alex. Real quick. Nice to meet well. you, Alex. Thank you. And his Instagram is AlexGNYC, the number one. So That's check right. him out. He's always posting awesome TikToks and reels and his journeys around Manhattan. And I love that you guys uh, tag me as well because I feel up to date with what Rangers Ed Podcast is doing. So you, you got it, buddy. for those tags. Keep tuning in and thank you for your support, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. Nice to meet you all. And uh, Ed, thanks again. You got Take it, buddy. Care, yeah, Alex. Take care. Yes, yeah, so that's awesome. Uh, like I said, Alex, he's a great kid. Uh, he turned out to be a, dec- a good friend of ours, a good friend of mine, fan of the show. Um, like I said, he faced some adversity early on in his life, and uh, he was able to overcome that. And, and, and those stories always uh, cut me deep. And uh, he's a great kid. Like I said, he uh, just loves the Rangers, loves hockey, loves all sports. So you can check out his content, Yankees, Giants. Like I said, he loves every team. He's always wearing a different hat. And I, I, I gave him a hard time in the beginning, but then I realized what he was trying to do for the city and and everything. So you, you just got to love it at this point. Um, but yeah, he touched on uh, he touched on Gallant a little bit there. Uh, he wanted to hear what Coach Ed has to say. Um, a lot of the things, obviously, I just touched on lack of effort to theme of this show uh, of this episode, I should say, not of the show, um, but of these playoffs as well. And it seemed like Gallant was kind of the one to blame a lot. Um, rumors are swirling that he might get let go. The Rangers might bring in a new a new coach. Uh, Cousin Ed touched on it in his little rant that we saw earlier that he doesn't really care. Um, I can't really disagree with him. I don't think uh, the coach with this group should really matter all that much. I mean, they all have experience. Even our kids have experience at this point. I mean, Sam always joked about it throughout the season that they became men. So I don't know what happened to that. Um, I touched on it in my therapy session. That I think this is the coach coming out on me, but it's hard to ever blame the coach because us as coaches is the hardest thing to do is not get out there and play or want to get out there and play and try and push our boys along or push the team along. And I'm sure Galant feels the same way because he's been there. He, he played on the Red Wings for many years, had a lot of Gordie Howe hat tricks. He was that type of player. So for him to see his team, team that he led all season, come out and throw up a few duds in the first round of the playoffs, it's got to be the most frustrating thing. Because the thing I said was, when you know the team has it in them, when you've seen them do it before, and they can't just string it together consistently, it's very, very frustrating. Um, so, Coach, you touched on it earlier before. I just wanted to, you to expand on that a little bit um, and talk less about Montgomery this time and more – like more in the Gallant point of view. I mean, I mean, he said it in his interview when it was brought up to him about getting fired. He said, look, I could, we had 108 points both seasons. I think my record speaks for itself. No one's, no one's approached me. I mean, yeah, it's always about how many Stanley cups you have, but not every coach wins a Stanley cup every year. It's obviously a grueling playoff. Uh, they went far last year, and no one said, oh, let's fire him. They thought, you know, it was the greatest thing. It, it doesn't happen, I don't want to say overnight, but, you know, the team, the, the GM puts a team together at the deadline, Team a team that probably should have won. But like you just said, these guys shouldn't have to be motivated. You brought in Stanley Cup champions already. The locker room should have been prepared. And uh, I don't – I personally don't. I mean, I'd have to hear all the players talk about it. What their gripes on, I, I'd be surprised, but I can't put it on him this year. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's really necessary to shake up the locker room like that. I mean, if there's no direct issue, I mean, I guess like we're seeing in Calgary with a lot of the players demanding trades and now rescinding their demands with trades now that Daryl Sutter was fired, clearly there was a huge issue with the coaching in Calgary. 
doesn't sound like that's the situation here. All the players were interviewed. They were all, I mean, I'm assuming they were pretty honest with their responses, whether or not they're telling jury something else behind closed doors is a different subject, I guess, but there's no reason for them to be that outgoing and say how good of a coach he is if they didn't think he was going to come back next year. Um, Mikey, what, what do you think? I mean, how do you feel about Galan as a coach and just overall? I think, uh, I don't think it would be the right move. I really like Gallant, you know, and I like the way he answered that question in the press conference that, you know, his the record shows itself, you know. Um, you can't say it enough, you know. You can't motivate these guys to play. It doesn't come down to coaching in the playoffs. Um, I think it would be the wrong move to take Gallant out, to be honest. I think you got to give someone the benefit of the doubt. I mean, two years is not enough time to really show – or have like a uh, full resume almost. So I'd be sad to see him go. I really would. Um, the only thing I do have, uh, like I say, a problem with is, you know, in my opinion, Fox was a liability this whole series. And I feel like he had the most ice time. And if I could see it from sitting on my couch, and I don't know why Gallant couldn't see it, but I'd like to see him come back next year. Yeah, I mean, uh, before we move on, that's a good segue into the next subject. Um, but before we move on, yeah, I, I like I said, Glenn, there's no direct issue, so I don't think there's a reason to shake anything up right now. Um, I think this falls on the players. Drury put together the right roster or what looks like a good roster on paper. I mean, whether or not Glenn was, I don't know, uh, can't think of the word, um, talk to about, the trades or whatever that they were going to get. I mean, Tarasenko seems to be a glance style player, so I'm sure he wasn't upset about that one. But who knows how he felt about Kane coming in. It's hard for me to believe that Drury didn't ask Truba, Kreider, all his leaders in the locker room, and then also ask Gallant what his plans are with him. Um, but, yeah, it's interesting that you say the Fox. I do want to talk about that because it was announced um, today, I guess, or not too long ago, a few hours ago, that he was nominated for another finalist in the Norris Trophy. Um, another thing I'll say with the regular season, obviously Fox is phenomenal player to watch in the regular season, but I, I'm finding it hard to see whether or not he's a playoff style defenseman and whether or not he's going to be able to hold his own. Um, seemed like he was able to do it last year, but it seemed like to me this year, he got pushed around a lot, thrown off the puck, um, with the high speed of the devils. It was almost as if he wasn't able to keep up with it cerebrally. And that's usually his strength. He's not the best skater, but he's usually able to anticipate the plays. And he wasn't able to do that. He was getting banged around the corners. He was create. He was forcing pucks that weren't there, passes that weren't there, and he was constantly fumbling the puck in the corners. And we saw it, obviously, very magnified in Game Seven, um, because if he doesn't let up that goal, I think that's a much different game. And who knows what could have happened? Uh, obviously, Fox is one of our favorite players. He's one of the best defensemen in the league. But um, I got to see more out of him, um, especially when the net was pulled. He got dumped in front of the net by Nico Heeshear and just let the other devil just put the puck in the open net. I mean, I understand the game was probably over at that point. But for your Norris finalist defenseman to end his season literally on his ass, that's tough. Coach, what do you think? I mean, after the first two games, I'll keep going back to it. I, I mean, my tone was definitely like this series is over. I don't think the Devils have an answer, I believe is what I said. Yeah. Uh, you also you know, no one, was, no one was complaining about Fox. No one was complaining about Panarin. You know, we had the season two. We had the series two games to none, five one in both games. It was look, looked like it was going to be a coast. And, uh, I can't blame it on one guy that I think Fox had a bad game in game seven. I'm not going to say he had a good game. He definitely didn't have his best game, but that was a team effort. It's a team effort. One guy well, didn't not lose that him game. Alone, not by any means, without a doubt. I mean, it's just. But what I'm saying is, I, I get your point. I, I'm always a fan. Of, I'm always one saying that he's not physical enough for the game. Um, But we weren't complaining about him in game one, two, or six. I wasn't. Well, we well we said it all year. I've said it all year. When he's putting up the numbers offensively, I, obviously there's nothing to argue about. When he's putting up the numbers offensively in games one and two, his defensive play can go a little unnoticed. But then when he's creating turnovers and 
and fumbling the puck on the blue line on the power play in, in games five, six, and seven. It, it's just like, what's going on with this guy? It's like he's yeah. supposed to be the ones that always stay calm, cool, and collected, right? We keep hearing that about uh, Schmidt, the goalie, who, who got rattled and pulled in, in game six. But, yeah, we always hear about this calm, cool, and collected. It just didn't seem like Fox was that, that, that guy towards the end of that series, and that worries me a little bit. Mikey, thoughts? I was going good. I was all right, you know, at the beginning of this episode. And now I'm just reliving everything, and it's just breaking me down. But I know that's yeah, why I love. I should have spread the guests out a little bit. So now it's, yeah. it's going to be the doldrums of the episode. Um, uh, yeah. Sorry, right. for, sorry, <laughs> fans. This is, this is a very melancholy episode. No, I mean, like I said, I hate to rip on Fox. Yeah, I obviously it's it's. By, by this time, well, not this time next year, but by October, later on this year, we're going to forget all about this, and Fox is going to be that amazing defenseman that we all know and love. And and hopefully, uh, like I said, it's a learning it's a learning experience for, for all the players. And uh, I think they were spoiled last year, and it was kind of like a magical year. So getting away from Fox, um, I think a lot of people want to hear our opinions on the trade deadline acquisitions of Tarasenko and Kane. Um, I mean, Coach Ed just said it. I will piggyback that. No one was complaining about them when the trades happened, when they were putting up points, when they were playing well, when Tarasenko was sniping and scoring game-winning goals against Philly. And now all of a sudden people are saying, oh, it was the wrong moves that they they didn't have to make those. They ruined the chemistry of the team, yada, yada, yada. I don't agree with any of that. I'll go into my Patrick Kane rant in a few minutes. But before we do that, I mean, Coach, what do you what do you want to say to the haters on Chris well, Drury? No, I know you touched on it earlier. If you if you listen to the show, you, you know it's no secret that Tarasenko is one of my favorites now. The guy is a keeper, in my opinion. He's a he's a, a player on both sides of the puck, both all three zones. Um, I'm. I find it hard to believe that Drury and, and Gallant didn't have conversations because of the situation of what happened in order to get Kane, what had to be done. I'm sure Gallant had to be notified saying, this is what's going to happen. We're going to have to play shorthanded. Whether they agreed or not is another story, but he had to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on, if you can get Patrick Kane going into the playoffs, it, I don't think any team would complain. Come on. I don't want to hear people say that. Because if he would have lit it up, I mean, he still got some points. He was one of the few Six guys trying to hit. Yeah, he was one of the few people trying to hit guys in game seven that I noticed. But obviously, he's, he's got that injury he's dealing with. Everybody knew it, but he was still trying. He's not, yeah, that guy that's gonna, he's not the guy that's going to skate around five guys right now at this point in his career and score goals. But I would have liked to see more on the power play. But he had points. Mikey, before I go, you can go. It takes time. You know, not, nothing happens overnight. I know it was – I mean, how many – what do you have? Six weeks with the team before the start of the playoffs? Something like that? Like a month and a half? Mm -hmm. um, Give or take. It, it takes time, you know, for, for the fans out there listening. If you've never played hockey – I never played hockey growing up, and – you know, I've been playing roller hockey with the wet bandage. Shout out to the amazing team. But I've been playing for seven, eight years, and it, I'm still learning. I'm still, you know, and I'm not going out there every day and playing. So it takes time. It really takes time to gel and, and get to know each other and stuff like that. So for the haters out there that said, you know, Kane wasn't the right move, you know, I think you guys are wrong. And if they do find a way to sign him next year, I think you, you, you'll see why. Let me yeah. let me ask this question. Let me ask this question before you go, Ed. How much? How many goals did Timo Maya have in the series? Zero, right? Zero. He made an impact on the game. He had some physical play and whatnot. He had zero goals. You hear the Devils fans complaining right now? He was brought in to score to yeah. be that power forward. Zero yep. goals, and they won. It's not one guy that does it. Yeah. Without doubt. I mean, yeah, I don't think a lot of people were complaining about the Tarasenko move. I mean, his play wasn't exactly great in uh, these games either, but like Coach had saying, you can't just blame one person. Um, but yeah, with Patrick Kane, 
Um, it's no secret that he's one of my favorite players of all time. I was very excited when they when the rumors started swirling. Uh, we called it back in July. Um, it's just hard for me to just look at Ranger fans in the fit in the face and say that it was a waste of time or it was it was the wrong move and it, it destroyed the chemistry of the team. <clears throat> Patrick Kane is one of the best players of all time. And we spoke about this and even Patrick Kane at 80% is a lot better than most players in the league. And we definitely saw that. Like I said, he had six points in seven games. That's, I wouldn't say it's Patrick Kane, uh, whatever numbers, but that's a lot better than a lot of other players did on the team. And that's him playing on probably one leg. Um, so, yeah, we saw today that there was no secret that he was playing with an injury. Um, there's there's obviously things going on in his mind while he's playing to favor one side, especially an injury like a hip. I can't even imagine skating like that. And he was still able to play. He was still able to play very well. And like I said, with a healthy Patrick Kane at the right price, there's no way you wouldn't want him on your team. And like I said – I think it's just more recent recency bias, whereas these the fans are kind of just annoyed right now that he didn't come out and and put up what fifteen points like the old Patrick Kane used to do in the playoffs. I mean, it's just simply not going to happen. And the Rangers didn't give up anything for him. They gave up a third round pick and some salary cap space, and it really wasn't that big of a deal. And there's no way people well, I'll say first, people right now are acting surprised that Kane was injured and, oh, if Drury knew he was injured, why did he bring him in? Why did they do it? Why would you bring in an injured player? Drury obviously knew Patrick Kane was injured. Okay, so that obviously – if Patrick Kane wasn't injured, I think we probably would have had to given up a lot more for him, first of all, which would have annoyed everybody even more. So the fact that he was injured was actually better for us. And Patrick Kane's coming into a team that – Cousin Ed touched on this, said this over and over again. We said this over and over again. Patrick Kane's coming into a team that he doesn't have to put up 15 points a, a, a series for that team to win. He used to have to do that with Chicago when they were winning all their cups, when he was playing first line, power play one, putting up 30 points in the playoffs, whatever. Yeah, he had to do that. But now we need Panarin, Zabanajak, Kreider, Lafreniere, Heedle, Kako, all those players to be the Patrick Kane of the past. And then Patrick Kane can just come in on the power play and put up six or seven points in the six games and the Rangers move on. So for, for the fans, you guys out there, this is my let's be real moment. Take a step back and, and think about what you're saying and what the type of player you're, you're trying to turn away from this organization because he wants to be here. If he didn't want to be here, he simply wouldn't be. So for him to give up his entire life, uproot his entire life pretty much, almost – in a way destroy his legacy in Chicago because it's not going to be the same as if he stayed there the whole time to come to a team where he wanted to be. And if he's going to take a huge price cut to stay, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder next season. He's going to want to take care of business. And if he does get surgery, the Rangers can take – Cousin Ed can touch on this when he actually comes back and when we have our off-season contract episode. But if he does get surgery, then the Rangers can long-term injure reserve him and he doesn't even have to play for the first half of the season. His money isn't even on the books. And then he comes back healthy, the old Patrick Kane, and ready for the playoffs next year. And I think that's obviously a huge bonus because a healthy Patrick Kane is going to be nothing compared to what we've been seeing the last couple of months. I wonder so. if um, – what are the chances that we do re-sign him? He would have to sign from what Eddie said. I mean, like I said, Eddie will go into the logistics um, when we focus on that. but. He would have to sign for probably two to three million for one or two years, or maybe two to three years. I forget what he said. But then, like I said, they would have to long term, long term IR him. Um, that's if he chooses to get the surgery. If he doesn't choose to get the surgery, then they they shouldn't sign him, in my opinion, because there's no way he should play a whole nother season through that injury because it's just going to be the same thing again, and it's going to be frustrating to watch. But I think if he t if he goes the right route, gets the surgery that he needs, he can come back stronger than ever and be and and give give the Ranger fans or give whatever fan he decides to play or whatever team he decides to play on another good couple years of Patrick Kane. You know, I, I don't think he's I'm, done. I'm wondering what um 
what effect did that rumor of Joe Quenville coming over? If, what relationship did he have with him? Is that is that a factor in keeping him? I wonder if that's something going on. I actually didn't even think of that. <laughs> to be honest with you, that's a very good point. Obviously, fans out there, Joel Quenville, he was the longtime uh, coach of the Blackhawks through their dynasty years, obviously through uh, Kane and Taze's cups. Um, I didn't even think of that. I didn't put those two together. Uh, that's very interesting uh, concept. Um, it's hard for me to say that they would – not cater to Patrick Kane, but like kind of like make that move because of Patrick Kane. But who's to say Kane wasn't talking to Drury and saying like, this is exactly what this team needs. Like this is how Quenville coaches. This is, the, this, these are the pieces that he likes to have or what, who knows? That's a very good point. What well, like, what would you think would be the benefits of having Kane's old coach behind the bench? I don't know. I don't know. You know, he has that, he has that blemish. He has that blemish of what happened, obviously. Well, that's another thing is people are getting ahead of themselves. Supposedly he has been cleared by the league to start talking to teams, but technically I think uh, Gary Bettman still has to like give the okay. So I think people are getting a little ahead of themselves in that department as well. Um. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I had on my list uh, that we need to discuss. I think overall our defenseman played pretty solid. I mean, Truba, we could talk about his huge hit on Timo Meyer in the last game. Yeah, let's talk about that because that made me happy. Ooh. That made me smile. Yeah. That was the highlight, that was the highlight of the game. That was, that was a garage Ooh, sale hit. A garage sale hit. That was a garage sale hit. It was. Stick went flying, glove went flying, I think. Um, yeah, so fans, obviously, I, I hope if you're listening to this podcast, you had to have seen it. Uh, Truba finally stepped up and did what Truba does and uh, took out Timo Meyer in, I want to say, what was it, like the last like six or seven minutes of that game, of game seven? About that, yeah, about that. Um, just stepped right into him, threw a clean hit, kept the elbow tucked. Timo Meyer's huge face got in the way once again <laughs> in this game, and he was just put out. And, uh, yeah, I think it it was probably six or seven games too late. He should have came out in game one or two and tried to throw one of those hits to set the tone. I mean, I guess he probably didn't have – maybe he didn't have the opportunity to do so. Um, but we we were saying it a lot that he had to do something like that early and often, and he waited to the last game. But uh, it was a good highlight reel. It was an amazing hit. What, do you, what else do you guys got to say about that one? Definitely a you clean hit. It was exciting. Right? Yeah, I would say he should have did it in somewhere in game four to somebody because, like I was saying on texting you guys, I'm starting to really hate that team. I know during the season I'm like, I don't hate the Devils as much as you guys, but now I'm watching them <laughs> against Carolina. I'm like, I really hate these guys now. Yeah. yeah they that, just, the, they uh... just... Go ahead. Not because they beat us, but because I guess you just has this – Little cocky, smug attitude. <laughs> he does. Well, he did he does. come out you and know? say that uh, they got bragging rights, but Florida won. No, they by do. The way. He's not wrong, but uh, just now, yeah, game two, right? Yeah. yeah, so game two, Florida's up 2 0 on the Maple Leafs. Not surprising after everything we just talked about with Mikey 150. Um, what were we just talking about, Mikey? I think I cut you off. No, you... I was just gonna say about Truba. Um, now that Aaron Rodgers is a Jet, he might try to get uh, recruited, signed for a middle linebacker or something. He keeps throwing <laughs> hits like that. Yeah, um, that's funny. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers was at game six when Coach Ed and I were there. And honestly, I've never heard the get the guard in that loud. Yeah. When they put, when they put him on the screen, the entire place erupted. I, I was shocked to, to hear like how many Jets fans were actually there. Um. I I thought maybe 50-50, but it sounded like everyone in the place went crazy. Yeah, it was pretty really crazy. Wild. Yeah. It was like they scored a goal. It was like that loud just for Aaron yeah. Rodgers. They've never acted that way with any other celebrity. Um but yeah, it was cool. I mean, whatever. We'll see what happens with that. Um But yeah, with the Hughes thing, I I personally obviously he's a phenomenal player. He's a highly skilled player. I don't see the defensive uh ability or the defensive awareness. I guess they don't really care about that. It seems like he's playing the wing in the defensive zone and he just looks for those opportunities to break 
I think it's insane how many breakaways he got. So I guess that is one my one gripe to have with the defenseman. And uh, I think it happened when Fox was out there quite a quite a bit. Um, but I think we got to lay Lindgren to blame um, for a change on that one because Fox just should be worrying about his offensive abilities and de- and Lindgren is supposed to be the one that we rely on to be aware of uh, players like Hughes on the ice. And I think yeah, that's backing him up. Needs, yeah, he needs to work on on a personal level or whatever. Um, but yeah, I just don't see it. Uh, the the deep, lack of defensive structure is not something I really want in a player. Obviously, he's phenomenal, um, but I don't think he's like that good to really give up his defensive um, responsibilities that much. So I think eventually that's going to bite him in the ass. And I said it like all playoffs, that one breakaway goal that he had, if the Rangers just scored on that play, then it would have literally been Jack Hughes' fault that the Rangers scored. But of course, the Rangers couldn't put that puck in the net, and Jack Hughes gets a breakaway, and they end up losing that game. So. Things like that were very well, frustrating. Uh, his comments off the ice just eat away at me because, to me, a player like that, I think it's, I think it's a, it's more, hum- it's better when they're a little bit more humble. And when he's being yeah, this yeah. cocky, it's just a little annoying to me. Yeah, I think that's the difference between him and Crosby, and uh, that's what I mean. Con- and Connor McDavid, they're not right. quite, they're not quite like that. I mean, but you, you know, know what? That's the game. Good. But that's the that's the era of these younger athletes now. You look at it in golf. You look at it in all sports. These younger athletes are brought up a different way. Their attitude is different. It's almost like that video game mentality. You know, it's 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 a different world. Yeah, to have that humble yeah. play is a different uh, animal now. Yeah, I was yeah, watching video games, athlete. coach. He did a little. No, bit. not like you guys. <laughs> Tetris. That's about it. Yeah, it's about it. I never grasped those controllers. You played. Uh, you used to play golf with us towards the end a little bit. Yeah, the golf yeah. I like because you can handle. Yeah. That's a different. Uh, it's not a reaction type of thing. You used to swing with one, f- two fingers on the joystick instead of using the thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no. What we're, are you laughing um, at, Mike? <laughs> Yeah, the one thing I saw last night in in Jack Hughes, he got high sticked, and he was oh what a- he, must have, he must have been bitching to the ref and to the his the, the trainer on the bench, the coach for like five minutes after the play was give over. me a break. Like clearly it was a penalty. Don't get me wrong, the ref missed it. Should have been a double minor. Jack Hughes was bleeding a little bit. Hey, it is what it is. But dude, you got to get over it at some point and get back out there and score a goal and make a point. You it's know, play like, hockey, get through it. To tie into the Rangers, we saw the Rangers complaining about getting kicked out of the face off, complaining about calls, complaining about that. They didn't just take care of business, and they get you got to use that to almost fuel you, fuel you to do better. All right, if the referees aren't going to give us the bounces, then we're going to create the bounces on our own. If they're not going to, if they're going to kick us out of the face offs, all right, we're not going to cheat. We're going to win the face off anyway. If he's not going to call that high stick on me. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get a goal in the next shift to prove everybody wrong. Now, I don't need the power play. I could score even strength. Things like can that. I, yeah. Can I just say something about these high sticks? I mean, throughout the league, you're watching these games. It's getting – I mean, they should call the embellishment penalty on these high sticks. Yeah, yeah, they're getting high stick, but the guy's like throwing his head back. Play the freaking game. Some of them, they get sticked. It hits the shield of the helmet, and they're like throwing the head back like they got shot in uh, like JFK. <laughs> Give me a break. Oh man. Oh. No, yeah. They could definitely get better with those embellishments without a doubt. Without that should doubt. be that that should be the embellish you they call it on a trip. They call it on a trip, call it on that. It's ridiculous. Yeah. They could start Starting to get that. like a soccer game. And one thing that I don't like or I think they should add is the bleed, like uh, the drawing blood penalty or whatever, should, shouldn't just be for a high sticking. It should just be for anything. Because if you hit a guy from behind, if you get a roughing penalty and he hits his face into the boards or something and draws blood, I think that should be an extra two. If it's going to be for point. high stick, then what's the it's difference? Not horrible. You're, you're drawing blood either way. You know, I, if they want to create more offense and they want to get those dirty hits out of the game, then think about it that way. Um. Well, Trouba would have been uh, gone then. Trouba would have been gone then. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that one. Well, then you also got to, if you're going to take that into account, then you also got to take into account if his nose got in the way because (laughs) Maya Maya had the uh, his nose is 
He had the cotton ball on his nose twice in the series. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he's something. He's something. Um, all right, before we move on, I think uh, we're going to wrap up this episode. I mean, I know we've complained about the players a lot, but we're going to officially give everybody – we're not everybody. We're going to officially give our playoff doghouse award sponsored by Suter Sweet Cheese. But before we do that, we can't forget about our sponsors – Sorrento's Pizza of Long Beach, who got us through the playoffs, uh, gave us two fantastic meals. Um, that pizza is something else. Coach Ed did a few or did a review on that. I posted that on YouTube and Instagram, so go check that out. But Sorrento's of Long Beach, I mean, if you guys haven't checked them out yet down on the West End, definitely do so. They have an amazing Italian deli with everything you could imagine, fresh pastas, ravioli, uh, Grade A meats, um, chicken parm, eggplant parm, different dinners, salads, you name it. And they can definitely hook you up with any custom pizza you want. So go on and check them out at Sorrentos of LB on Instagram and Sorrentos of LB.com to place your online order. And you could always just pop in and say hello. I'm sure they'll give you a nice little free garlic knot or something if you mention Rangers Ed Podcast. Um and then, yeah, our other sponsor, Bella Italian Marble. Coach Ed, have you done any jobs recently with them? What do you got to say about your boys over at Bella? Just picked up an order this morning for your for you and Mikey's boy, Jeff. Oh, nice. our old boss, Jeff. Yep, good to hear. <laughs> what, what, what do they got going? How was the process? Talk about it. Very, uh, just like I said in the ad, came in, I uh, they picked out a stone. Measured it up, cut it up. I picked it up, put it in today. Fit like a glove. Everything went smooth. And this is for a kitchen or a bathroom? Bathroom. It was a little bit of a uh, two-level bathroom countertop, so it was a little intricate, but everything worked out perfect. Sounds like Incredible. Jeff. <laughs> yeah, so shout out to Bella Italia Marble over on Lawson Boulevard in Oceanside. If you live in the area, go check out their showroom. But if you don't live in the area, don't worry. Uh, you could just... I'm sure if you have something in mind, you could send it over to them or you could send it over to Coach Ed and he'll hook you up uh, for all your they're a lot. They're a lot, they're a lot like you. us. The fa- they're a lot like us. The father has no idea how to use the phone, but the son who works in the office, if you need to, if you need to send some, if you need to send some pictures or Instagram or anything like that, he can work with you like that. The father's like me where he's all hands on in the shop. There you go. And that's kind of like how Sorrento's operates too. So I think we have a trend on what on who our sponsors are. It's <laughs> old school, new school, old school, new school. Yeah. Kind of like our podcast. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I know, I know <clears throat> we thought that the playoffs were going to go a little bit longer and there was going to be more ads and more uh, content for you guys or for our partners. Um, but we are going to continue on and keep releasing stuff for you guys and, Instagram and all that, but thank you very much for your support. Uh, we wouldn't be doing the show without you. So without further ado, we got to get into Coach Ed's doghouse to wrap up this episode and to wrap up the playoffs so we could finally put this behind us and move on to brighter pastures. So who, wait, who, who are you kidding? What? It's never going to be behind us. You think that's the last rant from Cousin Eddie? <laughs> that's true that's true we probably this will is have not to have gonna be the one more nothing's gonna be behind us until opening night next year that's true we got a lot we got a, lot, a long off season ahead of us but i was trying to keep the fans a little uh brighter but um it is disappointing yeah, so. because now the podcast kind of has a damper on it where we can't make a run through the playoffs and talk about things but yeah, it kind of stinks. I was looking forward to more viewing parties, maybe hitting up Das Beer Garden. Shout out to them over there. We had a lot of fun with the deep run last year. Um, but you know what? Things happen for a reason. Like I said, I think last year was kind of a, a storybook run. Um, I don't think anybody was expecting it. So the difference between last year and this year is that we were expecting it, I think, because of how last year turned out. Um but all teams go through this. I mean, the Lightning went through it before they won their cups. The Avalanche went through it a bunch before they won their cup. Um, it's just very unfortunate that last year, I hate to say it, it's unfortunate that last year had to happen because now we're expecting that every year. Instead of this, this being a growing pain of like, if they lost last year in round one, then they lost this year in round one, we'd be having a completely different conversation that, that the team is still growing, you know? 
But because of last year, Jury went out to get those get those players that we spoke about. All the fans were excited. All the fans were anticipating a long playoff run. And uh, we just ran into a buzzsaw devil team, and they just simply wanted it more. Seems um, to be the story of the playoffs for a lot of teams, though. Yeah. So, so before we run the little doghouse, let's get into it. Sponsored by Suitors Sweet Treats. <laughs> So shout out to Meg and Michelle. Um, I actually asked them to join us uh, for this episode to give us their own doghouse pick for the playoffs, but they are actually on their way to Ohio right now for a cookie competition. Ooh. So they couldn't, so they couldn't join us. So good luck to them in their cookie competition. And if you want to place your order for um, Meg and Michelle's delicious cookies, head on over to Etsy, Suitors Sweets and More. You can see it on the screen right now. And use promo code EDPOD23 to get your very own Coach Ed's Doghouse cookie along with – oh, grab the wrong one – along with the Bulldog or what I found out, any dog of your choice. Meg actually made some cookies for a fan of ours down in Dallas, which I didn't know we had fans in Dallas. So if you're listening to this episode, reach out to me on Instagram and say hello. I'd like to uh, pick your brain and see how you're feeling about the playoffs moving forward with the Dallas Stars. Um, Hopefully, uh, those Dallas fans of ours aren't Cowboy fans as well. But other than yeah. that, we're good. Yeah, that's that might be a that's risk. It's going to be a tough Maybe. one. <clears throat> yeah, that might be tough. Um, but yeah, Meg made them a poodle to go in their doghouse. Um, but they used the promo code. They got the free doghouse cookie, and they got the poodle instead of the bulldog. So, cool. Shout out to Meg for always uh, doing what's right and making the best cookies out there. And before we pick ours. <clears throat> She texted me what her pick is, so I'm just going to give it a quick read. As for the doghouse, I put the entire Game 7 Rangers in there. They were a completely different team from two days before on Game 6. Everyone looked tired and unmotivated and uncharted. You could literally see how they gave up the second the Devils scored their first point. They took their foot off the gas and just wanted to go home, which is what they got. The only players I would keep out of the doghouse is Heedle. <laughs> I don't think we'd agree with that. Kreider and Igor. They're the only ones I feel like wanted to be there and gave it their all. I'm not saying the team didn't give it their best, but when you have two of the highest paid forwards not lighting the lamp, something's wrong. They need their motivation back. They need to go back to the basics and stop treating it like a job that they have to do, but rather a dream that all the peewees dream of doing. So shout out to except, Meg. Except for Hedo. Well said, Meg. Yeah, we couldn't have said it better ourselves except for the Hedo comment, but – to each their own. If you like Hedl, then that's okay. You must be on cousin Ed's side. Um, as long as you yeah. can, as long as you keep sending cookies, Meg, you could like Hedl. <laughs> a few other players that I do want to give a shout out. Yes, Kreider um, had a good series overall. He might have disappeared for maybe one game, two at the most. But I wanted to give a quick shout out to the entire fourth line: uh, Goudreau, yeah. Mott, and VC. They showed up every single game. Like I said earlier, whether you're making 1.5 million or 10.5 or 11.5 million, whatever it is, no matter what, you got to go out there and do your job. And the fourth line did their job. They're not asked to score a ton of points, which they did. They scored, I think they had maybe two or three goals in the series. They did their job and more. They forechecked hard. They were throwing hits. Modder was all over the ice. He was skating hard every single game. Um, so I just wanted to. I didn't want to go throughout the whole episode without giving a shout out to them. Um, so yeah, coach, you go first. It's your award. Who you got going to the doghouse? I know we could probably each pick ten to fifteen players, but we got to just pick one. Who's the one guy that you really just couldn't stand this series? I couldn't pick the power play. You got to pick a guy. All right, fine. Well, same rules. Same rules goes as the uh, the season. The coach. I mean, actually. I, I mean. If I gotta pick one guy, I gotta get I gotta pick Panera. And I don't mean to pick on the guy, but he's gotta put his 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 whole thing is points. All right. We we talk about that. He gets the points. He gets a lot of power play points. He's not a four checker per se. He's not a hitter. He's not a a grade A defensive player. His game is points, especially on the power play with an extra man. He did not do anything indecisive, missing the net, you go on and on. We can analyze every power play we had. It wasn't one power play. It was the, the whole series. Yeah. 
So I have to give it to him. Yeah, I mean, I don't if think anybody. He, if he goes good, the power play goes good. Yeah. Yep. He motivates everybody else. He, he's usually skating a little bit better, moving around, creating space for himself and for other players, dishing the puck cross ice right on their tape. It just wasn't happening. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're not trying to pick on anybody here, but I don't think any uh, any listener out there is going to disagree with that pick. Mike, you go next, and then uh, I'll anchor it. I have to agree. I think he was noticeably not there this entire series. And you can't be making that kind of money. You can't be putting up 90 points a season and not show up for the playoffs. I don't think you could give it to anybody but him. I know Mika wasn't there, but he had a goal. Okay. Um, you know, he locked well, Mika down was Hughes a couple of games. Was def- Mika was yeah. there defensively. He, he locked down Hughes a couple of games and stuff like that. So, you know, you can't take that away from him. But it's been Aaron for me. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to disagree with those picks. Um, yeah, I, I could definitely pick him myself, but I'm just going to go a different route just to keep things a little interesting. I'm going to go with Vinny Trocek. Um, fans out there, you might not agree with me or you might not have noticed things, but maybe after I talk now, you'll kind of see what I'm talking about. But <clears throat> we brought a player like Trocek in to replace uh, Ryan Strom, which he did a great job of during the regular season. Uh, the faceoff percentage went much higher up than last year. We spoke about it. I think he motivated motivated all the other centers to be better, which I think it definitely rubbed off and, and it was spread out over the whole team. So I'm not taking anything away from him on that, but the reason why they got Trocek instead of Strom, I think their offensive ability can almost cancel out. But the reason why they got Trocek is one for the faceoffs and two to bring that extra grit and that extra – um attitude or crashing the net and i don't think he brought that so i think what i was saying before is like everyone's got to do their job i don't think trocek really did his job this series um i think he took too many games off he's got to be that player that is going into the corners hard every single time uh we saw that in carolina from him last year in the playoffs and he was a huge pain he has to play against and he didn't really bring that this series and every time i turn around he was losing faceoffs. There should that a player like him and his reputation of us thinking or knowing that they brought him in to win faceoffs, we should be turning to each other and say, "Yeah, another win by Trocheck. Yeah, another big win on the on the on the power play. Oh yeah, defensive zone. None of that. It was none of that. He was losing simple faceoffs to guys like Nico Heischer and these other devil centers that shouldn't really hold a candle to him in the in the faceoff circle. So I went a little off the charts with that one. I'm going to go with Trocheck. Like I said, he should have been he should have been on my list of bringing energy every single game because we're not looking to him to score goals or to really put up a ton of points. We're looking to him to bring that energy on that line and create more space for Panarin, and he didn't do that. And I think he was just playing – he was playing really nervous too, and he was trying to do too much instead of just simplifying his game in the playoffs like everybody else should be doing. So – that's my little rant on Trocek, but I still love him. I still think he's going to bounce back. I, I don't hate the signing. I still think they made the right decision. Um, but like I said before, it's going to be a learning, a learning, uh, learning curve or whatever you want to call it for everybody. So hopefully they bounce back. A little different, a little difference playing in the playoffs in Carolina as opposed to New York, too, media wise and pressure and whatnot. Without but a doubt, I'm not. I'm, I'm not giving him an excuse, but. No, and I'm sure he probably felt like Panarin wasn't having his best playoff, so he probably thought that he had to step it up a little bit more offensively. And like I said, we were noticing him like the puck was rolling off his stick, which wasn't happening in the in the regular season. He was able to to skate the puck a little bit better in the regular season through the neutral zone. That time and space isn't there in the playoffs, and you got to adapt. And he wasn't really simplifying his game. Like I said, he was just giving him the puck up a lot. And- Whatever we can keep going, but uh, yeah, we've been going for almost two hours, guys. I mean, we got a lot off our chests. I think it was a good episode to get one out. Um, so fans, thank you for sticking with us. Uh, I hope you enjoyed all of our guests. I think we kept it interesting, tried to keep it as light as we could, but uh, yeah, this one stings. This one stings, everybody. So sleep it off. And we'll bounce back next week. We got some good content coming up for you guys. Not going to give anything away. But we got some good things lined up in the very near future. And we got a lot of exciting episodes. And think about the offseason as an exciting time. And things are going to change. And we're going to get new pieces. And people are going to get signed. And 
Just try and keep some, it positive and look forward into the future. Some people will leave. Who knows? Who knows? You never know. You never know. Hey, I want to thank all the fans out there, especially uh, to me. Like I keep saying, it's amazing. We got a fan in London. What's his name? Gazi? Gazi? Call Birmingham. Him? Birmingham. Gaza. Yeah, Gaza. I mean, incredible. We got a fan in London, Germany, Dallas, you know, all over the country. Meg out in uh, Tennessee. I love it. It's great stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Shout out to Gaza. He uh, he threw up that YouTube video of him opening up our T-shirt today. I thought that was great. Uh, there was times where he started to make me tear up a little bit. He was making yeah. me laugh a lot. He was funny, man. He's a he's a good kid. Uh, hopefully, I get to we get to meet him one day in person. And uh, yeah, let's go Rangers from across the pond. Shout out to you guys. Thanks for all your support, brother. Really means a lot. Yep, definitely. So yeah, with that, I think we'll sign off. Mikey Producers, you got anything you want to plug for the YouTube? What's coming out tomorrow? Anything? Keep an eye out for this video. Mikey P150 has graced us with the nice 150 recapping everything around the league. So uh, stay tuned for that. Um and yeah, hopefully we get a couple more. Uh, like Big Ed, or like Little Ed said, we do have some uh, some big things happening. So stay tuned. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. The podcast is definitely taking a turn, and like we keep saying, we couldn't do it without you guys. It's the fans, the support, the love, the motivation to keep going, and our sponsors, I, I it, our sponsors, our partners, financially supporting us. We couldn't do it without you for all of our stupid subscriptions we have to pay to keep this show going. Um, yeah, I touched on it before, uh, coach, I didn't really tell you much about this. I did after you guys left, um, game seven, left my apartment. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I've been toying around with it. Neil goes on after every single devil's game to like recap the game and like talk to the fans and stuff. I was like, you know what? I was a little nervous. I was like, what if no one comes? Like I was just being a baby about it. And so on, on, on what was it? Monday. I was like, you know what? Like, I just need to get this off my chest. I don't care if anyone comes. I'm just going to record it and I'll post it. Whatever. If no one comes, I'll just say what I have to say and whatever. Turns out that like close to 150 people were in and out throughout the course of it. I was on. I was on for an hour and 20 minutes with our fans. Wow. They were they were texting into the chat, asking me questions, asking me what to address, what I thought happened in the game. So it was really cool. So thank you. Shout out to all you guys. Nick, uh, Cody, uh, John uh, was out there. Um, our usual guys were all on for a little bit. Oscar, Meg came on for a little while. So it was a lot of fun, man. I, it, like Coach said, was just saying, it's hard to think that we have fans like that and you guys actually want to hear what we have to say. Um, so I'm going to keep doing it. Um, maybe not every single game, but most games. I'll, I'm going to hold my little therapy sesh. I already made a sign, Rangers Ed Therapy from Little Ed's Couch. I mean, I watch most of the games uh, from a couch, so we'll figure it out, but – um, yeah, I figured I'll hop on and talk to you guys. Hopefully we'll be celebrating a lot of wins next year. Um, but it doesn't have to be just me. Mikey produces will hop on coach Ed will hop on cousin Ed. Hopefully will hop on too. So that's, uh, some content to look forward to next year. Uh, just an idea. And, uh, yeah, thanks a lot again. Like I said, I was really touched. It was, uh, and it was really fun. It was very upsetting. It was, like I was very sad, but it was really fun. And it, it was cool to talk to you guys and get through it together. So. If you guys want to keep coming, I'll keep doing it. <clears throat> and uh, thank you for doing all that Instagram and advertising because most of the stuff that's going forward is because of that, and it's great stuff. And for Mike Same. putting together, for Mike putting together his uh, editing or whatever he does over there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do much, yeah. Coach. I just, I just, I don't have any jokes. I don't have anything. I have no idea what goes on on that end. I know you do something, so. Whatever it is to yeah. get it out there is very important, and I have no idea how to do it, and it's good that you guys do. So, Yeah, yeah. Shout out to all of our fans. Once again, thank you so much for all your support. If I didn't give you a shout out, you know who you are. Uh, one last shout out. I will be at the Hartford Wolfpack playoff game tomorrow night. Oh, so cool. That's cool. Don't look now, but we might be switching the name of the podcast to wolfpacked.pod. So. We'll see how the game goes tomorrow night. I might be a hardcore wolf pack game, but we'll see. So if uh, you happen to be going to the game, take a look out for me, message me on Instagram, whatever, but I'll be there. That's you cool. Have, you have, have a good time. My fan of New York Rangers, my card friend, my card agent. Can't wait, buddy. It's going to be a good time. All right, fellas. <laughs> Mikey's getting frustrated with me because I keep talking. 
Love you guys, fans. Thanks again. Let's go. Have Rangers. a good night. Let's go, Rangers. Love you guys. Have don't a good get, night. Don't give up. Never give up. No quit.